What's up everybody? It's your boy the legend joined as always by Molly. And we're here at Six Flags Fright Fest, which you can't see because it's hung by the gallows. We're here at Six Flags Over Georgia checking out their Fright Fest event. As you can tell, it's um, pretty foggy right here. And we're going to take you through, show you all the kind of stuff. Talk about the shows, talk about the haunts, talk about the rides at night, talk about the scare zones, all that kind of thing. And let's go for it. So the park has a lot of these things. They'll just be like randomly out of the midway. Like this one's just a small box kind of thing. And you wait in a small line and go through. And um, some are cool, some are not. This one was not. Essentially, you go through and you walk through a really, really narrow pathway with one drop window and somebody that sort of comes out and says, boo. Like, it was kind of weird because it is a, uh, you know, it's a narrow pathway, as you can see over here. Like, that's all the room you get to go through the, uh, the uh, one room haunted house. And obviously it scares some people, but it's really, really narrow. See, you got that guy coming through there, which made it kind of freaky, but you know, it's again, it's, it's a one room haunt. Um, some of these are better than others. This one, not so great. They do only allow three to four people. Yep. So we just got done with our first of a couple of haunted attractions here. Um, five attractions here at Six Flags, you gotta pay extra for it. This is one of them. It was the Terror Train, and it was a classic theme park, cheesy train ride. You get hijacked, you get um, turned through the wrong part of town, and uh, it was actually kind of neat. They had, they had a conductor with a microphone, another lady with a microphone. Eventually they get killed, and um, you get hijacked, and it actually was kind of neat because you exit through over here, you can see that. And that's actually kind of like a, a mini haunted house or scare zone you exit through at the end. So um, I thought it was kind of neat, it was actually kind of a cool idea. Uh, I uh, Like something I don't think I would pay extra for, because it was one of the wristband things. But uh, my favorite part, and Molly agrees, so we were walking through the, the scare zone haunted house area at the end, and uh, there was a, a, a guy with a baby right in front of us. One of the actors pops out around the corner and says, boo, kind of thing. Like, oh, oh, baby. And then he stops <laughs> right away. And we started laughing. But uh, Terror Train, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Probably, I think it would have been better if it was a shorter train. And yeah, we, we, were in the, we were in the third car. So, so we you, couldn't see everything. If it was the yeah. two cars, I think it would be wonderful. Yeah, if you, if, uh, a piece of advice, if you're going on Terror Train, definitely try to go in the first car. You'll probably get the better show. But uh, uh, not bad, not good. So... We've seen about half the park so far, and so far the dumbest thing yet has been, the, my camera doesn't want to focus on it, but it's the, the tunnel of love here. And here's all it is. It's an entrance that says tunnel of love, some strobe lights, but here is all it is. It's, it's, it's flashy lights, and that's the tunnel of love. Those people are walking through it right now. Starts here. Ends there. No scare actors. You're just walking through. On occasion, there will be a chainsaw man on the other side of the wooden Yeah, race. that's it. Like, they, some of these are cool, some of these are not. This one is absolutely not. So here we are, Dr. Fright's Fridatorium 3D. And this is the only true haunted house here at Six Flags Over Georgia. And something I would definitely put as a, a disappointment. This is a, a building and a house that's just a, it's not done, it doesn't do anything else year round. It's just a haunted house. It's just for Fright Fest. And uh, it ends up being a really, really weak 3D haunted house. Uh, a couple of good things. One thing, it's rather long. Uh, you know, it is about, probably about seven, eight minutes long, I would say. Yeah. But uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of actors in there. Another good thing, they do pulse you very, very much. So this is not like, you know, Halloween Horror Nights or Netherworld where you go through in a big giant group. You're in a group of probably two to eight people. And uh... But you have to be in the middle to get the most scares. Yeah, it, it, it was really kind of weak. It, it felt very, very cheap as I was walking through. Um, this is something here at Fright Fest I would probably give a, a pretty heavy thumbs down to. And again, it's something you need that, that wristband, that $20 wristband to go through. And uh, really, if, if you have a building that uh, no, does nothing but wait for Fright Fest, I would expect a much better haunted house than what they give. Agree. Now, over here's kind of neat. Um, on the stage near Daredevil Dive, they, they do a freak show, and uh, you know, sword swallowing and flamethrowers and that kind of thing. For for like four straight hours, they have different acts come and perform, and uh, that's pretty neat. That's kind of cool. As you can tell, like if you look at the line for the pay extra haunted house. There's almost no one in line for that. But if you look at the, the freak show, you've got pretty much a full a full set of people 
that are there waiting to see this girl uh, twirl fire or do whatever she's about to do. No, I think she's supposed to swallow us. Oh, sword swallower? Sword swallower, yeah. All right, well, there she goes, fire sword so swallower. So if you know me, you love arcade games and crane games. This is sitting out here on the midway, the grab a clown. And Molly hits, is gonna hit the start button. And then you move the crane claw wherever you want. And then a demon clown sort of pops up, blows air at you. And uh, I think that's a really, really cool thing just to have sitting on midway. So that, that's not even one of the little touches that I really, really like here at Six Flags. All right, guys, new ride, the Joker Chaos Coaster. Larry Larson's Triumph of Beauty. And check this out, this is how busy Fright Fest gets on a busy night. It's got, you get in line there, there, it's got a full queue for the Larson Looper. Don't wait in a full queue for a Larson Looper. That's public service announcement for your friends here at In The Loop. So there's been a couple of these uh, smaller kind of walkthrough things that we really have not liked. One we really kind of enjoyed was Curtain Chaos. It's a very, very short kind of mini haunted house here. And you just walk through a series of curtains and you don't know if you're turning left or right. And there's a, a couple of characters in there that really, really get you. It's confusing, you don't know where you're going. Good scares. And this, um... It's like a mirror maze, except it's curtains it's, instead of mirror. Yeah, and you don't know which ones you push to open and which ones you push to not. And then at some point, you, like, I, I tried to push left. And I'm like, weird, that doesn't feel like a wall. That's because it was somebody's face, <laughs> like an evil clown. So, uh, Kern Chaos is a cool little mini attraction here at Fright Fest. So whenever there's nothing scary, which is sort of, it looks like it should be a haunted house, but it's not, it's actually a photo op zone. So like, if I, if I want to take a photo with Molly in a padded room as if she was crazy, yep, I could do that. Or if she was uh, in a closet of, of jackets, chained to a wall, I could do all these things. Yep, that's true, I, I could do that. So it's, it's kind of a photo op area. I don't really know what's to come here. But there you go, if you want your picture with upside down bat creature guy. Um, we're here in a, a Mayan temple, no, this is like an Egyptian temple kind of thing. With that. And, uh, there you go. Yep, you can take your picture with that. And, um, I guess we're done? Maybe? I'm not really sure. It's very dark in here. And, oh, nope, we are done. Yep, that's it. That was, uh, Fright Faced. One of the, uh, well, that was, that was weird. Yeah, it's weird. It has like the facade and everything that you would think like this should be a haunted house. And it has like the, the budget like this should be a haunted house, but it's not a haunted house. Now granted, I mean people do like to take pictures. We are in the, the selfie generation now, so I imagine it could be popular. It's just odd. Agreed. It's got a really creepy clown on its logo. Zoom out, zoom in, fright face. So we're still in the circus area, and a couple things I like. They use um, these old, like, kind of convoy kitty trucks. They use them just as a, a decoration in their scares, and there's a couple of them. There's one over here, and then a couple over there, as you look around. And then this is cool. Another thing with a kind of a little touch is, it's a photo booth, try it for free. So right away, you should be turned off, like, hey, free? Six Flags doesn't do anything for free, but it's really kind of cool. You go in there, you sit down on the bench, you hit the button, it's just like, Five, four, three, two, one. Before it hit one, there's a drop down window and probably that evil clown, like you're watching a video camera, and then at one, the, the drop down window drops down this evil clown and yells at you to get out. So another really cool little touch here at Fry Trust in Sicilia, Georgia. So we just got out of Tales of the Bayou Blood Bus, which is here in the, uh, the Thunder River uh, queue area. And uh, it was kind of not good, not bad. It was sort of an outdoor haunt, uh, walkthrough kind of thing. And it, it took place entirely in the Thunder River queue, which was different. I was hoping, when we first saw it, I was really hoping that it was going to be like, uh, sort of like corn stalkers at the, some of the theater, Cedar Fair parks where they uh, they empty out their, the River Rapids ride and they, they, they fill it with, you know, haunt and stuff. Uh, this was not that. It was just in the, uh, the very long queue, which I've never been on Thunder River. It takes up a giant amount of room, as well as... Uh, 
at the same time it also uh, has a very very long queue so he goes in there and comes in the station and goes back um, we'll say this there were a couple good stairs I jumped once Molly jumped once yep. um, had a couple of uh, effects that were pretty solid for Six Flags like a giant alligator puppet guy giant like you know yeah it was really cool uh, giant giant alligator puppet head thing probably about like five to six feet long and three feet tall it was a, a very gigantic puppet and then a couple of cheap scares but uh, uh, some of the some of the sets were not bad some of the sets were terrible overall it did feel a bit cheap but it did some scares and there was some cool stuff so it wasn't without uh, wasn't without uh, some some backup. Huh? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Probably wouldn't pay for it, but nah. Yeah. Maybe that was one of the pay extra things. Now normally I hate, 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 hate advertisements at Six Flags Parks. This I actually have an exception to because Impractical Jokers is one of the funniest damn shows on TV. <laughs> Joe, Sal, Q, and Murr are hilarious and um, I love Impractical Joker, so I just want to point that out. That that's good advertising. No, no, like it's it, it doesn't really fit in, but it's it's just good advertising because I love that show. The show's great. So they have a lot of smaller stage shows here at Six Flags Impractical Joker. And this is one of them. It's a, a Salem witch trial show where they are uh, trialing this witch here, and uh, it actually really creates a very cool backdrop with um, the ninja in the background. And um, yeah, some sort of a Salem witch trial show. That, that's how it ends. So there's stuff that we, we didn't even know that was on the map. We're in the, the Fear Riders scare zone. And uh, there's a, a essentially the what they call the cage maze, which isn't on the map. And it, it's really, really tiny. It's just like uh, fences and cages. But it's, it's like a physical maze in that you hit dead ends and uh, you really don't know how to get out. And then there's fog and Yeah, there's lots of fog lights. and strobe lights. So, uh, but you don't know where you're Yeah, going. parts of it I lost Molly. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. So I thought that was very, very cool. And this is uh, like, like theme to, I guess, the uh, crazy biker scare zone. I'm not, I'm not really sure what this is. But it's actually one of the better parts of the park with the theming and everything. And I mean, that's one thing, the strength of the park, the strength of the event, is that there, there is just fog everywhere. I mean, you can't even see from here to the Superman side. And they've got these, uh, those things, I don't know what they do, they make sparks when they hit the ground or something. But uh, again, a, a, a very cool atmospheric part of the park. And I mean, you could tell through the camera that it's just, it's kind of cool walking around here. It's all, it's all fog and, and scare actors and, it's actually one of the neater parts of uh, the Fright Fest, I think. With these uh, guys, with whatever <laughs> that thing is. I don't think I got any of them on camera, but uh, it's very, very cool with the... <laughs> you suck at that! So one of the more kid-friendly things here, they take their, uh, their antique Hanson car ride, and they make it a, a kid's sort of a read-along adventure ride. So all throughout the... Uh, all throughout the ride, they have a whole bunch of different open books, kind of like this guy here. Which my camera may or may not want to focus on. There we go. And uh, as you go along, there's all different sort of book things for the kids to read along with. And uh, it, it's a very, very cute idea for kids. It takes a, a very simple ride and uh, makes it into a, something a little bit special for Halloween. And uh, I, I thought it was cute. Well done. I didn't know it was storybook, I passed the first page. She did. I mean, the, the McBoogles, they went on a picnic, but, uh, you know, Leadfoot Molly here decided to zoom right past storybook one, and, you know, I may have not gotten the complex plot points that happened throughout the rest of the journey. They went on a picnic. More cool uh, atmospheric theming, I would say, here around the, uh, the Monster Mansion area. You got this guy who's just sort of hanging out. And there's a whole graveyard kind of thing, purple lights. Again, uh, nothing too spooky, nothing special going on here, but just some some very cool theming. The most scary thing was there was the fight oh God, between that couple. Go. Yes, the most scary thing was that couple having a fight. <laughs> Which, for those of us in relationships, is terrifying. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what time is it? That's right. It's beer 30. You can't see that Bud Light sign because it's too bright. 
But yeah, it's beer 30 here at the Evil Spirits, which is kind of a bar. And they actually have a whole bunch of specialty cocktails, something Six Flags doesn't normally do. Four different specialty cocktails, basic cocktails, beer with Sweetwater 420, really good beer too. So they've got some good beer selection, obviously paying nine bucks for a cocktail, but what I was shocked about, there were two things that really shocked me at this. One, that Molly hasn't drank in the entire thing yet. And two, first of all, one, they're actually pretty strong beverages. And two, they come with this neat kind of souvenir cup, like a plastic cocktail glass. Now me and her, we, we drink in the hot tub, we own a hot tub, so we drink in the hot tub all the time, and these are gonna be like perfect hot tub drinking glasses. So I dig it. You know, I might have to get another one, because it's actually, and it was strong, too. That's a, I could not believe how strong it was. It is. For Fantastic. Mixed drink. Yeah, it was pre-mixed. They all come out of these uh, kind of coolers here. They do have some bottles, so if you just order like a, a rum and coke or something like that, they'll, they'll, they'll mix it for you right there. But uh, these things aren't too bad. Ooh, look at that. Loaded, loaded freak fries. But we just got out of the ZX-1, which is in the old, uh, the old Batman stunt show kind of arena. And uh, another kind of haunted walkthrough, haunted house kind of thing. Uh, mixed feelings on this one. It had like a, a kind of a themed Q video, which I'm pretty sure starred their PR guy. Um, so it kind of set the scene in the thing. And it was more of like a, parts of it were kind of like interactive theater more so than a haunted house. But a, a lot of the props in there, it was just like, see the fencing like this? They took fencing like that and they put tarps on it. And that was about half the house. And then another third of the house was essentially just wooden pallets they made fences out of. So the uh, theming level was very weak. Uh, I didn't get any scares at all. I didn't hate it, but it was also a very long line. We went in line for about 40 minutes. Now the line is not nearly that long. That was about half as bad as it was. But uh, uh, definitely a piece of advice would be, hello, <laughs> get there early. <laughs> get there early because the line gets very, very long. So hit that one when it opens. Um, not bad, but also far from good. I think you liked it better than I did. I, I, I like the theater part. Yeah. Like if it had more real, actual sets instead of, you know, pallets and fences, I might have been a fan, but, uh, you know, not... If you're paying $20 for this band, I expect a lot better. Coming? So I, I didn't know what this was. It's the last ride. I thought it was a haunted house. Apparently, I'm getting in a coffin of some type. I've got my, my Fright Fest wristband, so, uh, is that, what do I do? I hop into here? Okay. This is odd. All right. Yeah, I guess. This is hilarious. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So you get in the coffin, it just shakes you around, it has like a machazing chair, and that's it. <laughs> well, that'll do it here from Six Flags, Fright Fest here at Six Flags over Georgia. Um, overall, an okay event, not good, not bad, nothing I would get out of my way to go see. Um, if you have a season pass, it's fine, go check out the thing. I would not go out of my way to see the park at a... Uh, uh, start off good things. Uh, the park looks great. You know, it, it's fogged up, lots of decoration, music, lighting. That part is very, very cool. Uh, unfortunately, there is a lot of not so great to go with it. Uh, none of the haunted houses were very good. You, you do have to buy a wristband for twenty dollars to go to uh, that ridiculous coffin thing. Uh, the three walkthrough haunts and the terror tram, which was. Uh, not particularly great. None of them were, none of them were as a, a very high quality. Especially when you're paying more, you would expect like, okay, this would be better than what I'm seeing in the rest of the park. And it's, it's really not. Um, so those are kind of the highs and lows for me. I did like, you know, a lot of entertainment, a lot of different shows going on. And uh, the way the park looks, the drink, very good. I didn't think I would say that. A, a, a pre-mixed drink at a Six Flags Park would be one of my highlights, but that was definitely one. All right, uh, first person here. Uh, Molly, favorites, least favorites? Uh, theming, I think they did a very good job with all the lighting and fog. Um, everywhere in the park looks great. Not However, I don't think I would spend $20 for a wristband. No, I, I agree. So, um, I would come to the event if I had a season pass in the area, but I probably would not get the wristband. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I didn't feel like I got the twenty dollars worth for the wristband. Right. You and can get what you see. Yeah. Like this is very very neat. Like it, it's very well themed. It's well done. But uh, the, the wristband attractions were, were a little bit underwhelming, especially for the extra cost. But uh, overall, if you, if you got a Six Flags Pass, I don't mind Fright Fest. Especially you get to ride the roller coasters at night, which is very cool. Have a drink, see some spooky atmospheres, see some shows. It, it's kind of neat. But uh, it's also uh, far from good, you know. We, we live in Orlando, Florida, home to, you know, Halloween Horror Nights. Right down the road is Hollow Scream in Bush, Tampa. We went to Netherworld last night, which was this amazing haunted house here in Atlanta that was uh, 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 incredible. If, if you're here, if you're, if you're in the Atlanta area, you gotta check out Netherworld because it's, it's really, really awesome. I do say this, this uh, sort of goodbye they're doing, really, really neat. Yeah, I tried to eat my camera, that would ruin our YouTube page here at In The Loop. But uh, overall, you know, not bad, not good. Uh, not, not far from a strong theme park haunt event, but not, not exactly uh, not exactly something I would say, man, that sucked. Parts of it sucked, parts of it were cool, and uh, that's pretty much my thoughts. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the, uh, the section here. I'll do my best to get back to you. There's a nighttime shot of Goliath, and we're going to order some pizza.